All right, I have looked up what to say and what not to say, so we should be good. All right, well, let's talk to this rodeo clown then. What there. the hell is a rodeo clown anyway? Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, he nods politely, but he keeps playing. All right. This rodeo clown is eating a comically large haunch of meat. He narrows his eyes at you, as if to say, mine. <laughs> this clown is idly juggling a knife. Howdy, stranger, he says with a smile. All right, let's talk. Oh, you again? Uh, howdy. Hmm. All right, what do I say? Well, you can point out that they're a long way from the circus, that's fine. You guys are a long way from the circus. Oh, you know about our circus? Yeah, Barnaby Bob's Traveling Circus something, right? Up north? Barnaby Bob's Perfectly Normal Traveling Circus Sideshow. That's the one. It's way up north, though. Mm-hmm. So what are you guys doing all the way down here? The clowns exchange glances. Camping? You can tell by the campfire. What I mean is? Yeah. Why are you guys camping all the way down here so far from home? Hmm. Well, we're on a break, so uh, we decided to take in the sights. What, what sights? This is the middle of nowhere. Nonsense. Check out those cactuses over there and, and those, those mountains and, well, all, all this sand. Plenty of things to see. Wait a minute, you guys walked all the way down here from the northernmost part of the territory for sightseeing on your break? We, we get really long breaks. We have a good union. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Do you know anything about that wreck camp nearby? Uh-huh. Oh, the clown with the meat chuckles quietly. Oh, somebody's camp got wrecked? Why, well, that's terrible. Whatever happened? Oh, I think you know what happened? Uh, let's see. Uh, well... Uh... Yes. Yes. Alright. Oh, I think you know what happened. The harmonica falls silent and Clown's eyes grow very cold. He stops toying aimlessly with his knife. Well now, I don't much care for that accusatory tone in your voice lady now we're not supposed to fight them well you can fight them and lose but you can't fight them and win so let's avoid the fight all right uh what i mean is surely you must have heard the cows attacking you know now that you mention it we did hear quite a ruckus coming from not too far away a lot of you know mooing and so on right boys the other two clowns nod in agreement <laughs> Shall I ask them if they know a lot about cows? Yeah, they know a lot about cows, right? Can I ask them about that? No, a lot about cows, right? <laughs> no, uh, well, you would assume that just because we're clowns? Well, I figure it comes with the territory. It's been a good 20 years since a rodeo was an actual thing, you know. So I uh, dress that way. Yeah. Oh, dress? Oh, well, it's, it's traditional after all. Isn't it inconvenient? Well, well how do you mean? Uh, which one? I don't doesn't know. Matter? I don't know. Okay, so it doesn't matter. I don't know. I thought you looked it up. I know what some options are. I don't. I haven't seen the entire conversation. Oh, tree. okay. Well, the it must be hard to talk to people when they're all creeped out. Oh, do you, do you think we're creepy? He leers at you, showing yellow teeth in the flickering light of the campfire. They almost look pointed. Uh, <laughs> Relax, partner. That's just the old stories getting you worked up. I mean the old stories about how demon cows and demon clowns war against each other in hell? <laughs> Jesus. And rodeo clowns dress like that because the rodeos were sort of like reenactments of those battles? Well, you've done your homework. So what do you think? Are demon clowns real? Uh, this is where you are supposed to say that the demon clowns are maybe real. Okay, well, I guess maybe. The demon cows turned out to be real after all, so I know the clowns too. Clown smiles, but his eyes are hard. It's sensible to keep an open mind, but you know, stranger, 
of clowns did turn out to be real, this could be an awful awkward predicament you find yourself in right now, couldn't it? <laughs> I think I'll just be going now. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now Ooh. this should have given you enough clown suspicion to where you can access the main stage. <laughs> Do you see that a simple three-man tent, which probably sleeps about 40 clowns? <laughs> yeah. So, let's find out if we can now access the main stage. Mm-hmm. We'll try. Talk to the guy. Yes, perfect. All right. Oh. Oh, uh, take it, please. Take it for what? Oh, Barnaby Bob Stunt Spectacular. What's that? Well, the boss does a show. Yes? Yep. What kind of show? Knife tricks. Mostly. Am I gonna be the volunteer? See, because now all the clowns are suspicious of you. Yeah, and they wanna <laughs> kill me. Here's my ticket. Okay, go on in. Show will start soon. I guess I'm gonna be the volunteer in the middle and they're gonna try to kill me? Well, maybe, maybe. Uh, talk to the clown? Huh? Huh? Well, this is the same muscular clown that was guarding the entrance to the stage area earlier. It doesn't look like he's gonna let you backstage. I guess, I, guess, I guess you gotta, I just have to take a seat. You gotta take a seat. You take a seat and a smattering of other patrons appear and sit down as well. After a minute or two, there's a crash of cymbals and a clown runs in from the backstage curtain and jumps up on the stage. In contrast to the other clown's colorful clothing, his is relatively simple. Black wool trousers and a bright crimson shirt under a pale tan leather jacket with fringe on the sleeves and a red heart painted on the shoulder. His face paint is plain white without any colored accents, contrasting his curled black mustache and thin goatee. A snappy silk top hat with a rakish tilt tops off his outfit. He doffs his hat and bows with a deep theatrical flourish and the small audience claps politely. I'm gonna clap too. There you go. Oh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Welcome one and all to Barnaby Bob's perfectly normal travel and circus sideshow. I hope you've been enjoying the attractions and distractions of our little traveling carnival. And now it's time for our star performance, the main attraction. Ladies and gents, put your hands together for... A loud drum roll starts as he gest gestures to the curtain, and then the cymbals crash again. The clown puts his hat back on with a chuckle. Me! Barnaby Ball! Yay! <laughs> Much obliged, much obliged, you're far too kind. Why, I haven't even shown you anything yet. With a laugh, he flips a large bowie knife into the air. You didn't even see where he pulled it from. A knife glitters at its, as it spins. He catches it and flips it in the air again, this time catching and balancing it on its point. On the tip of one finger, he holds that pose very still for a moment. Then jerks his hand out of the way, the knife thunks into the wood of the stage floor. Deep enough that he has to give it a jerk from side to side before he can yank the blade free. He winks broadly to the audience. Wouldn't be any fun if they weren't sharp, <laughs> would it, ladies and gents? No! <laughs> How exciting! He pulls two more knives from his jacket and begins a flashy and elaborate knife juggling act. Three spinning blades somehow turn into four, and then his hat is added into the mix, floating lightly through the cascade of knives without a single scratch. He finishes the routine by catching two of the knives in each hand and allowing his hat to fall nearly to the ground before catching it on the top of his boot and kicking it back into the air and on to the top of his head. Amazing, amazing. I'm getting so sick of the music, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now there's some applause I believe I've earned. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, it took a lot of hats to get where I am today. He chuckles as he adjusts his hat back to its original rakish tilt. Now for the grand finale. For this, I'll need a volunteer from the audience. A few hands go up. 
Barnaby Bob ignores them and looks directly at you. How about you, madam? I knew it. <laughs> Should I do it? Yeah. Oh my god, he's just gonna kill me. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, good, I like a brave one. Step right up onto the stage here. Your name, please? Annie Goldsweet. Well, it's a real pleasure to finally meet you, Annie Trouble Goldthwaite. Finally, huh? Is that your middle name? I'm not sure, honestly. Maybe at some point you've said that Trouble is your middle name. Mm. A couple of clowns haul a large wooden panel about seven feet tall and four feet wide up on the stage. They Even if I said that at some point, I definitely didn't say it just now. No. So. They stand it up vertically behind you and stay there, holding it steady. It has two holes in it slightly above waist level and a lot of knife marks. Press your back flat up against the wood, please, and put your hands through the holes. You do so. The holes are just a fraction too high, so it's not very comfortable. And then one of the clowns pulls your arms back tighter and ties them together with rough hemp. So it becomes much more uncomfortable for a variety of reasons. But don't worry, this is just to make sure you don't make any sudden and unexpected movements. We wouldn't want that, would we? Uh... Fret not, miss, everything's under control. He steps up close to you and adjusts your collar. Brushes a little dust off your shoulders. My control. You know, Annie, we get a sharp customer through here from time to time, but my, my, you're the sharpest I've seen yet. However, I'd bet a shiny silver dollar I've got something up my sleeve that's even sharper. <laughs> His pupils narrow to vertical slits as he grinds at you, revealing rows of pointed yellow shark teeth. As he turns away, you can see that the heart on his shoulder of his leather jacket is drawn with an arrow through it and the word mom. It doesn't look painted on. Oh, so his oh, so his leather jacket is made of human skin is, is what uh. they're saying. Mmm. Oh boy. You struggle a little, but your arms are too tightly bound. The rough hemp rope digs into your wrists. Barnaby Bob strolls to the other end of the stage and turns to face you. Now, now, don't you worry. This'll all be over soon. Just don't move. Oof. He has a knife in his hand again, gives it a few twirls and flips. Light reflected from the blade glitters in his eyes. Then, without warning, he hurls it at you. Thunk. The knife hits the wood before you can even blink. A hair's breadth from your left ear. Ah! I'm gonna stare him down. I'm gonna stare him down? I like it. Barnaby Bob grins at you as the cloud applauds. Another knife appears in one hand and an apple in the other. He tosses the apple to one of the stagehands who carefully balances it on top of your head. Time for the old William Tell routine. A bit of a cliche, perhaps, but there's a reason it's a classic, eh, ladies and gentlemen? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <sighs> the crowd watches with rapt attention as he flourishes the knife, spinning it and flipping it behind his back, and then faster than you can register, thwock! Cold apple juice dribbles into your hair and down the back of your neck. Two for two! What do you say, Annie? Should we go for one more? I'ma stare him down. Ooh. Barnaby Bob pulls out another knife and gives it a quick stropping across the pale leather sleeve of his jacket. And then whips a colorful spotted handkerchief from his pocket and blindfolds himself. This time his smile is much colder. I advise you to watch closely, Annie Goldthwaite, as you're the only one of us who can. I guess I'm gonna watch closely. The crowd laughs, but you don't really hear it. A knife spins in his hand. This time, either because of the adrenaline or because he's actually moving slower, you can see the motion of his arm as he throws it. He twists his wrist in an odd way that you don't think he did before. A knife is flying at you. A knife is flying directly at your right eye. 
Uh, do you want me to look what you're supposed to do here? The thing here? is, like, can I even move out of the way? Like, does flinch mean move out of the way, or does it just mean flinch? I don't know. He did tell you to not move. I don't know what the correct answer is, but I'm gonna say don't move. I'm gonna not move. Yeah, I was gonna... Yeah. The knife incredibly swerves at the last possible <clears> moment. <throat> Thunk. You can feel the wood shake from the force as it stabs into the board. The metal is cold against your right cheek. The audience erupts into cheers as Barnaby Bob removes his blindfold and pumps a fist triumphantly. One of the stagehand clowns unties your wrists and helps you get your arms out of the holes. Bob takes your hand and raises it into the air victoriously. Well now, ain't she a good sport, folks? And as brave a target as I've ever had, take a bow, Andy Goldthwaite. Take a bow. Uh, not a bow. A mm. bow. <laughs> I will take a bow, but not a bow. Aw. You bow to the cheering crowd, carefully keeping your eyes on Barnaby Bob. He bows as well, removing his hat with an elaborate flourish, and then he takes a, sip of, a slip of paper out of it. And as a token of appreciation, I'd like to give our star volunteer a gift. A year's supply of dynamite. Use it in good health. As he hands you the coupon, the clown leads him close to your ear and whispers, This was the only warning you'll get, girl. <laughs> mm. Barnaby Bob waves and blows kisses to the crowd as you climb down from the stage, and then disappears through the backstage curtain. The audience gradually disperses. I guess I could have used this to get over the mountains as well. Yes, you could have. Huh, well. Well, that tears it, doesn't it? It looks like these aren't regular carnies dressed as clowns you're dealing with here. These are definitely full-blown evil demon clowns, like the ones from the old stories. And they've just given you orders to back the hell off from their operation. So now what? <laughs> Well, now you can actually go backstage. Oh, okay. Yeah, you gotta talk to the clown first. Oh, I guess you don't even have to talk to him. Should I? I don't know. No, I can't. No. Uh, now, you can go and talk to Barnaby Bob. There's only one thing here, and that is uh, if you are rude to him repeatedly, you will fuck up the quest. Okay. Yeah. The wagon is old, but well-maintained. The brass plaque on the door reads Barnaby Bob, confirming your suspicions. So they want to peek in the window? You see Barnaby Bob sitting at a desk. He seems to be inspecting a large map, but you can't make out any details from here. So I guess I'll do it politely. Well, th I don't think this one matters, but yeah, sure. Um... Come on in, Barnaby Bob calls. Now, the thing here is, I guess that... I guess that the, the demon clowns are the natural enemy of the demon cows. I guess that's it. Okay. The holy war. Clowns versus demons. Mm. Or clowns versus cows. You open the door and walk into Barnaby Bob's office. He looks up from his desk, surprised to see you. You? Well, here I thought I made myself perfectly clear the last time we met. And yet you knock politely and walk straight into the lion's mouth. You are either extremely brave or extraordinarily foolish, girl. Both I might hazard to guess. Number one, I'm a full-grown woman. Mm -hmm. Stop calling me girl. Mm -hmm. But number two, I got some questions that I need answered. <laughs> well, maybe he's like several hundred years old. What do mm -hmm. I know? Oh, you think I'm gonna answer them? Well, if I didn't find you amusing, I'd have vanished you off the face of this earth for what little you know already. I appreciate that, but I can't just leave this situation unresolved. What curiosity did to the cat is going to seem like a Sunday picnic compared to what I'll do to you if you anger me, missy. Go ahead and ask your questions, but bear in mind, I already gave you your fair warning. Alright, so who are you? Hmm... The clown smiles sarcastically at you. Why, well, I'm Barnaby Bob. At your service, ma'am. You know what I mean. And if my estimation of your intelligence was not entirely off the mark, you already know the damn answer. You are wasting my time and yours. 
and you have precious little. Okay, what are you doing here? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Straight to the heart of the matter. Well now, I had you pegged as a clever one, so why don't you tell me? You're here because of the cows? That's gotta be it, right? Oh, perhaps you got a brain rattling around in that skull of yours after all, girl. That's correct. The cows came home, as you say, and we follow them. Why? Why? They don't disappoint me now that you impressed me, kid. Think about it. Rage old enemy that you've been fighting since time out of mind. Ups and leaves. No farewell. No postcard. Wouldn't you want to know what the hell is going on? You don't know? Dear, oh dear, I've gone and said something I probably shouldn't have. Missy, you are treading on some dangerously thin ice right now. I hope you are thanking your lucky stars that I consider you to be essentially insignificant. Mm. Mm. Well, I can hear those gears ticking in that three pound dog's dinner you call a brain, miss. Now it's my turn to ask a question. How are you going to convince me that I shouldn't just make you disappear like a fart in a tornado? <laughs> Well... Make it good, Annie Goldthwaite. Make it good. Because you get one chance at this. You need me? Uh, I can help with the cows. I guess. Do I now? What, pray tell, do I need you for? My freak show was plenty full. There aren't enough of you to be an army, you're just a scouting party, you're a reconnaissance, you're here to gather information. Yeah, and? You can't do that efficiently, not the way you guys look. You stand out too much, you need a human scout. Oh, don't you play games with me, little girl. You are talking to Barnaby Bob, Duke of Hell. I can make your worst personal nightmares look like a choir of softly singing angels. I'm serious. Mm. Look, I'm not your enemy, the cows are. And if you're after the cows, not humans, then you aren't my enemy either. Oh, the, the enemy of my enemy? Can't imagine we'll ever be friends, Bob. But so long as it's mutually profitable, I think we can come to an arrangement. You promise to leave the people of this world alone, and I'll tell you anything I find out about the cows. Hmm. Hmm. I gotta hand it to you, kid. You may well be the first human being to ever leave old Barnaby Bob speechless. We got a deal? Alright, I agree. We won't make any trouble for the humans. You bring me anything of interest you find about the cows. Hell, if it's good, I might even pay ya. Good. You're a smart gal, Annie Goldthwaite. You better be smart enough to know what'll happen if you double-cross me. Mama didn't raise a fool. Oh, good for her. <laughs> <clears throat> he shows you the map on his desk. There's a location circled in red not far from Dirtwater, marked Tannery. Well, this will get you started. There's an old tannery away south of here. I sent a few fellas there already. Go have a look. You find anything worth seeing, you let me know. One thing, you are strictly undercover. I won't be telling my boys about you. Not that I could easily get a message to the ones out in the field anyhow. If you need to defend yourself against them, well, so be it and good luck to ya. Alright. You All have right. discovered Danny's Tannery. What else is in here? Uh, ooh, the safe is warm to the touch. And you don't recognize the symbols on the dial. About half of Barnaby Bob's books are about juggling, balloon animal patterns, and other clown techniques. The other half are bound in human skin. 